Hey everyone, and welcome to our June live event for National Culture Circle. Once again, we have Susan Guzman back to answer your quilting questions and, of course, talk a little bit about the National Culture Circle Quilt Block Challenge that is happening right now. So thank you so much for being here, Susan. Oh, you bet. Hello, everybody. Great to be here again. So if you aren't familiar with what the Quilt Block Challenge is, it's happening right now, and there's a banner on the page either below or above the video you're watching right now where you can sign up for it and get some additional information about it but it is a challenge where we get to make the wonderful Lexington sampler quilt which Susan designed and I'm gonna let her tell you a little bit about it uh, the, Lex the Lexington sampler quilt uh, consists of let's see I have to count uh, two four six eight ten twelve blocks total but we're making um, six blocks twice and uh, it's been a lot of fun. People can still sign up for it uh, through uh, the website. Um, Ashley, what's the easiest way for them to um, to uh, get that link? I, that's, that's what the banner is for, either below or above this video. Okay. I don't know where it's exactly at on your screen, but you just enter your email right into that and you're signed up. Or if you're someone who uh, does a lot of Facebooking or is on Facebook a lot. Uh, NQC Quilt Block Challenge. You can do everything through there. And if you do the Facebook page, you don't necessarily have to do the email sign up, but you can always do both just to make sure you have all the bases covered and you for sure get the blocks each week. Yeah. And um, one tip for you if you're signing up through the Facebook uh, page, um, there's a pinned uh, posts at the very top of all of the posts and which what you do is you go to discussion There's a link on uh, it would be the left hand side of the screen um, You hit discussion the very first post is a pinned post that will take you to the current block But in addition to that you can you can click on each individual block that uh, from block one on uh, So it's it's really easy and then what you do is you just, well, make sure you read the first um, blog post uh, for block one uh, and then choose the quilt size that you want to make. Click on the appropriate link. Um, and then once you download the PDF from that link, be sure you read through all of the pages at the beginning of the packet because there's some really great information in there. Uh, since I'm not teaching live, um, it just kind of allowed me a place um, to share some things with you be so, before you start the program. Absolutely. All right, we have a question here. This is from Sonia, and she says, do your two blocks of each pattern have to match, or can you use a different color combination for each? You can do whatever you want. Um, I give some guidelines. Um, I do give uh, yardage requirements. Um, what, I, what I would suggest is that you choose your fabrics. You can choose as many or as little as you want. Um, uh, let's see, I guess I have, what was it, 21, I believe it's 21 fabrics mm -hmm. um, that I use within the entire quilt. Um, if you are a beginner, uh, don't be overwhelmed by uh, what the quilt looks like. Um, when, when we break it all down and do each block step by step, it's actually um, a really great uh, learning quilt for somebody who's new into quilting. Absolutely, and you used 21 fabrics. I also made the quilt, and I think I used seven. Uh, so you can use however many, and I think you even talk about in one of your live videos how you can do do that, change up different numbers of quilts and kind of change up uh, where each color goes in each block, right? Yeah, and Ashley, that's a good that's a good point. Um, there are videos that I do each week. Um, uh, the blocks are released on Thursdays, and I I think other than it, it was either the first or second week, I did the video on a Friday, but it's immediately um, around the time of the release. Uh, you can still go and uh, click on videos in the group and um, you can uh, view those videos. And the videos are in, what do we say, like descending? The date? newest one is at the top and then you can yeah, scroll and down and they kind of they kind of stack on top of each other. Well, yeah. so that answers this question actually. Anna Rose says that she has missed some of your live videos due to a different, difference in time and wants to know if the recorded versions will be available. So yes, they are. Yes, and um, for instance, this Thursday, I, I do want to try and start at around three o'clock, and that's about when I try to do my live videos. Um, so if you have any questions at the time, even if it's for prior uh, weeks, 
go ahead and ask me um, while I'm doing the video. And if I do happen to miss, because sometimes there's some lag time with them popping onto the screen, um, I always check uh, all the um, questions immediately following the video. And you are three o'clock in what time zone? In Mountain Standard Time. Perfect. Is it okay. standard? <laughs> Mountain Time. It's, MS, it's MST. That's how I know yeah. how to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jane wants to know, how did you get started in quilt designing? Um, well, that's a really good question. I've always loved designing. Uh, I'm a former interior designer. Um, when I was a young girl, I wanted to be a, a fashion designer. So it's just something that kind of, I don't know, has stuck with me over the years. Um, so early on when I started quilting, I started quilting, oh, probably, I, I think it was 2004 is when I actually started quilting. Um, and then I started getting more and more interested in the design aspect of it. So what I did was I purchased, um, I think at the time it was EQ, Electric Quilt 4. I think it was four, it might've been five. Um, but I, I started using that software and uh, I had such fun designing and coloring um, with the different swatches. Takes a little bit of time to, uh, in patience um, to learn, uh, but it's really worth it if you enjoy designing. So that's essentially how I started. Absolutely, and if you uh, have never tried playing around with electric quilt, after talking to you months ago, I got it. And it's it's definitely my new addiction. It's kind of fun. I will probably never make the number of quilts I've designed on there just for fun, but maybe <laughs> one day I'll work my way through them all. I hear you, Ashley. I'm the same way. I have so many on there that I haven't even, I mean, that I would love to uh, write patterns for, but you end up not having enough time in the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, our next question here, Bess says she's just learning to do quilting and needs to know what a very easy pattern would be to quilt to keep her quilt sandwich together. She says she has tried stitch in the ditch but thinks it looks sloppy. Um, well, there's a lot of different things that you can do. Sort of look at your quilt design, your top, um, and uh, maybe you can uh, choose some aspects of your quilt top. Um, for instance, like the quilt that's behind me, um, I used a lot of um, uh, rectangles and squares to do this design. And you can either shadow uh, quilt. Um, so shadow quilting is like either inside or outside um, your stitch lines. Um, this particular one, uh, let's see, this, this is sort of like hexagon within itself. And you can actually get templates, plastic templates, um, for quilting and you can even lay those on top of your quilt and trace them and you want to trace those with um, there are um, uh, markers that uh, actually fade uh, so you want to do those fairly quickly if you're going to be quilting uh, in that manner um, so that's another way uh, to quilt um, those are a couple of modern ways of quilting um, uh, except for the shadow, you can, I mean, you can do that on any quilt. Um, uh, you can do um, uh, diagonal lines if you wish, maybe tighten the lines up in certain spots. Uh, and what I would recommend you do is just try to do a, maybe a quick sketch of your quilt so that you have almost like what looks like a coloring page. And you can even just um, kind of plan that way um, on how you want to quilt your quilt. So I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah. So what is, I've always called it echo quilting. What is echo quilting and what is shadow quilting? Is there a difference? Well, you know what, shadow quilting and echo quilting really is the same. I've used the term echo quilting, I think, in, in uh, a previous uh, video. But yeah, it's the same thing. Um, just think of, you know, shadow is um, just a, a larger version of, um, you know, whatever the object is. Uh, so that's essentially what that means. Gotcha. And then when you're marking your quilt, do you have a particular marking pen, marking pencil that you prefer? Or do you just kind of use uh, whatever you have on hand? Or do you like, uh, I know, I call them like pounce pads or something where they have the chalk markers? Yeah, you can certainly use those. Um, I tried those once and I don't know, maybe I'm just a little uncoordinated. I'm not very good at using those. Or what I would suggest if someone uh, would like to maybe use some uh, different products such as the pounce, 
um, you can uh, perhaps visit a local quilt shop and ask them for a demonstration. I'm sure they would be happy to help you with that. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, some of the things that I use, well, I, I know that there are markers out there. That's really all I can think of. I, I'm not a quilter myself. Um, as a profession, I, I just design and make my quilts, uh, my quilt tops, and then I typically send those out. I've done some quilting uh, of my own, um, but typically I've done very simple things and I haven't used uh, anything to mark my quilt top with. Um, I would just say I, I've only done that a couple times and I would just say absolutely test it first and make sure if it says removable that it's actually removable on the fabric you're using because I have used I think they're called friction pins and they're supposed to be heat removable or iron off and I've definitely used them before to where they haven't actually worked so just just tr try everything first. Yeah, and actually another good idea, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Another good idea is to just do some searches on products. You know, Google has become such a great uh, search engine for tools and for recommendations on um, uh, different tools and uh, the latest tools. So um, uh, I would just recommend that or join a quilt group and ask in the quilt group, join the National Quilter Circle a Quilt Block Challenge. And I know the ladies in there would be able to help you. There are, let's see, uh, almost 42,000 people now signed up for-, for And that's just in the Facebook page. That's not the people yeah. who aren't on the Facebook page. So yes, there's definitely, if you want to lose a few hours of your day, go ahead and just start scrolling through that Facebook feed and you're going to look up and the day is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Our next question here, this is from Lucille and she wants to know what is a good quilt size for one to just sit and read a book or watch TV? I would like to make one for a dear friend. Wait, I'm sorry. A, a new quilt what? Book? A good quilt size to just sit oh, and read funny. a book or watch TV. Oh, um, but you know what? You can actually quilt any size. Um, uh, it's funny. I haven't hand quilted. Um, I haven't done the act of hand quilting quilts together. Um, but I know that, you know, you can get a, a big hoop and really any size would work. Um, maybe for, for your first uh, one or two, uh, maybe just do a throw size. Um, I don't know. Maybe like... Um, I don't know, 40, 40 by 60, uh, maybe something like that would be a good size to start or a ba baby size quilt. Um, if you have any newborns in your life and you want to make a baby quilt. <laughs> well, I, think, I think you can find there is such a thing what is like the industry standard for quilt sizes. But I mean, yeah. if it's going to be a throw or something that I feel like is if you're not making it to specifically fit a mattress size, you can kind of make it whatever size you want. Yeah. Very true. Perfect. <laughs> All right, our next question, Susan wants to know, she says, your directions are just amazing. Do you have any books on quilting patterns that are available? Um, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one book. Um, this is my book, it's called All About Strips. Um, I use all uh, strips, like with the fabric strips. You can also um, uh, take some of the patterns in here and use pre-cuts. Uh, and if you run into any questions regarding my book, if you end up purchasing it, uh, just shoot me an email. I'm uh, Susan at SuzGooseDesigns.com. Uh, and you can always find me through my website, which is SuzGooseDesigns.com. S-U-Z-G-U-Z-Designs with an S.com. Perfect. All right. Linda says, I am a novice quilter. When you start quilting, do you start at a side or in the middle? Uh, when you start quilting, you want to start in the center. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, because what you're doing is you're, um, no matter how much you secure your layers together, uh, there is going to be some sort of uh, movement. Um, uh, I should say when you do spray base your quilts, there's a lot less movement. And that's what I, I swear by spray basting. Um, I know some folks don't care for the uh, fumes, you know, using the canned sprays and that sort of thing. And I understand that. Um, but uh, yeah, what you want to do is plan out your quilting from the center and work your way out. And you want to do sort of side to side and from the center, top to bottom. 
Perfect. This is along the same lines, but you've mentioned that you have sent quilts out to be quilted. So Cheryl wants to know how much wider does backing and batting need to be before the top is added? Um, what you want to do is whatever your finished quilt size is, just add 10 inches to that size. Uh, so let's say you are doing a 40 by 60, do a 50 by 70 backing. Is there a certain amount extra you have to have for a long arm quilter so they can attach it to their machine? Well, they, they like to have at least five inches around um, all four sides. Um, so uh, that, that's been my experience. Uh, I know some quilters who are very skilled uh, are okay with less than that, but I would check with your quilter first. Um, but if you're doing your own quilt, that's just a really good rule of thumb to live by. And whenever I give yardage requirements, that's uh, essentially how I calculate it, is just to add five, five inches to each side uh, for any movement. You're obviously not going to use all of that five inches, but it's just a really nice uh, cushion um, for you to work with. It is, and if you're worried about it being a waste of fabric, because I leave a lot extra, and then when I'm done, I just trim it off and then I cut it into strips and that becomes my binding, because I like my binding to match my backing. So you can always reuse it. That's a great tip. Yeah, I, I've never done that myself. I, I have a lot of um, strips from old quilts that I've just sort of rolled up and stuck in my stash. Um, I've reused some of it actually. Um, and right right now, <laughs> I shouldn't say right now because I've sort of put the project off, but I've been doing this rag rug. Uh, there's a picture of it on my uh, Instagram account. And um, I've kind of put it off to the side because I've had a couple of things going on lately. <laughs> um, but well, we, uh, look, we look forward to seeing the finished rag yeah, rag. Belt. Yeah, rag I rug. am too. <laughs> so is my kitchen floor. <laughs> Perfect. All right, another question about long arm quilters because I actually um, used a friend of yours who is an amazing long arm quilter, but I have never had to search out and find my own quilter. How do you do that? Where do you even begin? Um, and how do you know if you're going to, you know, find a good quilter or not, or just how do you how do you go through that process? Well, I what I would suggest um, again, you know, your local quilt shop is such a great resource. If you don't have a local quilt shop, you're in a smaller community. Um, perhaps get in touch with, uh, say, the fabric department at your Walmart or uh, Joanne Fabrics or any uh, Hobby Lobby or any bigger store like that. Um, I, you know, I'm wondering if anybody advertises even on say like Craigslist, um, as far as reliability or someone who you think is good, of course, word of mouth is always good. And again, I kind of direct you to, um, uh, perhaps joining a, a quilt group uh, online. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of those folks who are in smaller communities, mainly. Um, if you're in a larger community, it's a lot more accessible for you to uh, visit, you know, your quilt shops or whatnot. Uh, but another thing to do is uh, through social media, you can find um, quilters that way. Um, and uh, just ask your favorite designers. You know, I mean. That's uh, what I did. Yeah, even. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm more than happy to recommend a few people if anybody wants to email me that question as well. Perfect. All right, we have kind of a long one here. This is from Jan, and she says that she's made a musical bird table runner. Her main fabric is black and white. There are musical staffs and notes, etc. Very busy. And then I've added rickrack, and I have placed mini embroidered birds on the rickrack as though the birds were standing on it. My quilt is very bright and busy with the music, the rickrack, and the birds, but I don't know how to quilt it, being that it's busy already. I love how it turned out, and I don't want to ruin it by quilting over it. Help. <laughs> wow, that's a, I wish I could see that. That would be awesome to see. It sounds adorable. Um, you could perhaps incorporate some echo quilting in certain places. You might want to do an all over quilting. Um, uh, if you do send it out uh, to be quilted, you could just ask someone to use thread that sort of blends in so you don't lose all of the magnificence of your quilt design um, or yourself if you're uh, quilting it yourself that's what I would recommend uh, to use a neutral thread um, whether it be uh, like a, a cream or um, 
uh, a light gray, or if you have like a certain themed color throughout, uh, a light version of that real works well. Um, but, uh, and also try to keep your, if you're quilting it yourself, your um, bobbin thread the same, um, because sometimes that can show through at the top. So just to be on the safe side, uh, I would use that. Another thing I, I'd like to recommend is also um, monofilament thread, which is actually, um, I guess, a form of a plastic. Um, and uh, there are some monofilament threads that are out there that are uh, very strong and work really well. And um, so you might want to go that route, actually. Yeah. Or my personal favorite is stitch in the ditch. I love it. And <laughs> then you won't see it at all, but you'll, it'll help all your designs pop out. Uh, but speaking of monofilament thread, we did talk about this several months back. Um, there was another quilter who uh, has used it and has talked about um, it, it doesn't the very first time I ever used it, it felt like you were sewing with fishing line, right? It's very yep. kind of hard and thick. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's 100% nylon, but they actually make nylon polyester blend now, monofilament thread, and so it's a little bit softer. Um, so if, if you're worried about that, also, if you plan to set anything warm on your table runner, although it sounds too beautiful to put anything on, but uh, make sure you're not using like 100% nylon thread that might melt if you put like a hot cup on it or something. You know what, that's a really good point. I I didn't even think about that, but that's so true. Yeah, I guess like with a quilt, you wouldn't have to worry so much about that. But yeah, if you're doing a table runner, that's a good point. My mom and I were talking table runners this afternoon, so I have them on my mind. So that's why I was thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Our next question here, this is from Odilia, and she says, where can I buy the fabric for the Lexington sampler quilt? I want to make one exactly like the one in the picture. <laughs> well, um, I was told that it was going to be out in shops uh, August, September timeframe. Um, however, just recently, and I didn't get a chance to check, so you might want to check. Um, there was an online shop that had a fat quarter bundle of the collection. So I don't know if uh, maybe the fabrics came in early or they got uh, the pre-cuts first. I'm not really sure, which I guess you could incorporate those if you wanted. Um, if you are using um, the French General Collection, and gosh, I have to remember what the name of it is, La Vie en Rouge. Yeah, La Vie en Rouge. Um, uh, go ahead and do a search on that and it, it might be available early. I, I'm just not certain. Um, who, um, who is it by again? It's by Moda. Okay. Um, if anybody would like um, any of the SKU numbers that I used, um, you know, I probably should put that together and maybe we can put that on the website or I'm yeah. sorry, in the group. The face, yeah. The you know, or, or if uh, we'll, we'll have to talk to um, uh, NQC and see if they even would want to send it out. I don't know. I can't, we can't promise anything, but uh, we'll talk with them about it as well to see what the best solution is. Yep. Perfect. All right. Our next one here, what is a great and easy binding application? Cause I know that's your favorite part of quilting. <laughs> oh, binding application. So a, a way to put binding on. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a couple ways you can do it. Either sew it to the back and bring it to the front uh, so that you can sew it with your sewing machine. Um, and you do it that way because uh, if you did it the opposite way, um, sew it to the front and, uh, with your sewing machine, flip it over the uh, edge and then sew it on the onto the back with your sewing machine you're going to get that thread that thread line uh, on the front of your quilt that's why we we suggest you do it that way i personally like if i have the time to sew it onto the front flip it over to the back and then hand stitch it uh, around the outer edge um, if you have a tight deadline which i've had many of those in the past that's when i suggest um, sewing it uh, onto the back flipping it over to the front. And then what you do is when you flip it over, you're just um, sewing a thread or two in from that edge of your um, binding. And uh, you can do it that way. I had had a tutorial one time. Does NQC have uh, a tutorial for that? We do have a couple of tutorials on binding. I believe we have one that shows the hand stitch. I'm not sure we have one that actually shows stitching it on by machine because i was actually going to ask you i do it opposite if i'm 
whether I'm sewing by hand or machine, I still attach to the front first and uh -huh. then wrap it to the back and make sure it overlaps that seam line. And then I stitch in the ditch because oh, okay. you know how much I love that. But <laughs> then that way it catches it on the back too. So right. that, that. Yeah, way. you can definitely do it that way. Personally, I don't like the look of that on the back because you can have like too much of an overlap. And I just, I, I like a cleaner finish personally. But it, if, if you're okay with that, um, there's, you know, you can certainly do it that way as well. Absolutely. All right. Our next question, this is from Wendy. And she says, as a quilt designer, are you bothered when quilters change your pattern that you have offered either by accident or by design? I would hate to offend a designer by trying to make your pattern fit into my scheme. Thanks so much for your interaction with this so along. It has helped tremendously. Oh, that is so sweet of you to ask, Wendy. That is really sweet. Honestly, I love when people change things up and make it their own. It just is, makes, um, makes my job more exciting. Uh, I can't speak for other designers. I think most designers feel the same way, though, from what I've known. Uh, but it's just really, really cool to see, even in a completely different style of fabrics. For instance, Ashley made my quilt uh, in grays, um, black, and white. Uh, and that's in that very fir first post of block one. Uh, there's an image of her quilt. And I love it. Personally, I, I'm an eclectic uh, designer. Um, I love e everything from contemporary to traditional uh, and in between. Um, so when I see something made up in a completely different style of fabrics, or even if you wanna um, move the fabrics within the design itself, the block designs uh, themselves, I just think it's really cool. And I think it's really awesome that someone is thinking outside of the box. So what if somebody not necessarily changed it in terms of color and color placement or fabric selection, but just try to take your design and maybe change a block a little bit? Like where is the line between making it fit your own style and like plagiarism almost or copyright infringement? Well, I would say, I mean, if you're going to uh, sort of make adjustments and then uh, try to market that as your own pattern, now that's that's not right you know that's that's kind of stepping over the line i believe anyone who wants to be a designer you have it within you to create something original and um you don't need to le lean on anyone else's design in that respect so um was i misunderstanding the question no i just wanted to make sure that, that we covered both just in case that's what oh, they meant yeah. i wasn't sure so yeah. I, thought I'd I know sometimes i don't really quite um, understand the questions fully. So absolutely, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> All right, next one here, this is from Quartz and she says, hello from Austin, Texas. She is new to mid-arm quilting and wants to know, do you use stencils or just free motion? And if so, would you have a suggestion on where to find stencils? Um, stencils can be found online. Uh, um, I have never used a stencil myself. Um, I think it goes back to that pounce. Um, <laughs> I bought one once <laughs> and I just couldn't quite get it. And uh, I just ended up sending my quilt out to be quilted. Um, gosh, I, I, I so wish that I did more quilting uh, because I'd be able to answer these questions more thoroughly on quilting itself. Um, but yeah, I would definitely check online. There are some really great resources. Check your local quilt shops check online quilt shops. Um, and uh, there's there's so many beautiful patterns out there and there are a lot yeah. of fun to do. <laughs> yeah, and if you're super new to it and you're not sure even like what quilter, or I'm sorry, what ruler you wanna use or what stencil you wanna use, even uh, we've talked before, we've, we've both shopped at Joanne Fabrics. They have awesome coupons. That's where I go if I want, you know, something less expensive and they have uh, stencils there too. So if you just want, maybe use a coupon, get one super cheap so you can just try it out first and decide if it's something you wanna do. I do that all the time. That's a great idea. Yeah, because you may or you may not enjoy doing it. So that's a really great way to start. Yep, perfect. All right, uh, Lois wants to know, what is your favorite thread for piecing? Well, um, I actually represent the thread that I, 
enjoy using, <laughs> and that's Aurifil. Uh, what I love about it is I have, I could say since 2000, I'm trying to think when I started using, I think I started using it in 2006. I've had maybe it break twice on me, and I make a lot of quilts. <laughs> and what I mean by that is breaking in my machine. And I think really what it came down to is it was uh, the ten my tension was off. Um, but I've I've just always had beautiful results. It doesn't. It rarely twists back up on itself, even when I'm doing hand stitching. Um, and um, uh, one tip that was given to me was if you're doing hand stitching um, and you're using RFL, pull it from the spool. When you clip it off, that's where you want to make your knot uh, and then thread it through your needle on the other end. If you're using one strand, um, uh, that has been really helpful to me. Um, for instance, I, you know, using it for hand applique. Um, but I, I love Aurifil. I swear by it. I'll, I will never, even if something comes out comparable or there are comparable um, uh, threads on the market, um, I, I'm real familiar with uh, the owners now of the company and it's like one big happy family. <laughs> Perfect. Well, so just be, I've mentioned iShop, Joanne Fabrics. I know some people love or hate them. Um, so I, a lot of times there you find Coates and Clark, you find Guterman, you find Sulky, maybe. I don't know that I've ever seen RFL there. So where do you get that? Where can you find it? Um, RFL is at, through um, uh, independent quilt shops. So your local quilt shops, um, if they don't have it, ask for it. Uh, and also online, you can do searches online. And and please know that I I don't mean to disrespect any other companies because um, I, I just happen to be uh, re a representative of the of the threads now so that's why I swear by them um, but there are other companies that uh, have good quality as well <laughs> absolutely and if anyone has seen me do one of my videos down in my sewing room I'm not down there now but I have like hundreds of spools of thread on my wall I like to just buy pretty colors I have I have a it's a pretty decoration I buy thread and fat quarters just for funsies yeah yeah it does make a pretty display <laughs> perfect all right, uh, Betty Ann wants to know, can I machine quilt one block at a time or the whole piece quilt together? I only have a regular sewing machine, not a long arm. Um, yeah, and you can you can quilt an entire quilt uh, on a regular size sewing machine. Uh, and again, you know, um, if you're online a lot, uh, go ahead and Google um, uh, different tutorials or go on YouTube. Um, there's some really great teaching tutorials that way. Uh, and gosh, I don't mean to take away from uh, NQC because I know that they have a lot of awesome videos as well. Ashley, do you know of any that you could recommend? Yeah, we actually have um, quite a few. I, I think uh, the one that comes to mind right away because you said, you know, you can quilt an entire quilt on a standard sewing machine. And uh, one of our instructors, Heather Thomas, does a video where she has a queen, an extra long queen quilt, and she shows how to maneuver that underneath the machine. So it is possible. Um, and sometimes I know people kind of roll the quilts to get it under there. She kind of does a more of a bunching technique, but it works and she gets all the way to the center of the quilt and is able to quilt the whole thing. So we definitely do have plenty of videos on how to quilt your quilts using using a standard, uh, standard machine. Excellent. And you know, one thing that um, I'm just kind of throw this out there. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I really love are the gloves, the gloves that have, and mine may be a little dated, so there could even be newer products out there, but I use the, the white gloves with the um, sort of rubberized fingertips and they're sort of reversible. So either for left or right, left hands or right hands, or um, you, you kind of wore down one side and just flip them and the other side of them work just as well. So we actually have a video on the site of, and you will, I'll think of her name and I'll, I'll think, I know you know her cause you used to work with her, I believe. And she is actually Sh Sherry Driver shows oh, how yeah. to use, I think she's using a sweet 16 machine and she's wearing these purple gloves that have the grippy things. And I had never seen them before and never heard of anyone else who uses them. So you have to keep your hands flat or how do, how do they work? Yeah, yeah, you keep your hands flat um, and, and you move, you know, you just sort of move your 
um, uh, quilt around uh, as you're doing your Freeman. Uh, but Sherry is an awesome teacher. Yeah, she she used to, I knew her before I uh, worked um, as the editor of McCall's and then we we continued our friendship and she is just, I, so many people have so much respect for her and she really knows what she's talking about. <laughs> yes, and we have, she has quite a few videos on our site, so check all of those out. Um, do you find, because I'm someone who, who grips my quilt to move it around, uh, mm -hmm. Does this save your hands from potential pin sticks? Oh, I guess it. I guess it could. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. I see. I. I don't use pins. Well, I, and and I don't really use straight pins either for um, my quilting. Um, I always use the basing spray. If I would use pins, it would be the uh, quilter safety pins that are curved. Um, so you probably wouldn't, you know, if you use those methods, you wouldn't necessarily be sticking yourself. <laughs> That's true. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> our next question here, Cindy wants to know, what was the first quilt block you ever made? Oh my gosh, what a good question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't remember. Okay, so if you can't remember your first, then what's your favorite? My favorite quilt block? Mm -hmm. um, probably one I've designed. <laughs> Is that full of myself? No. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean, let's see. Uh, you know, there's there's a form of a flying geese quilt. Um, I th oh, gosh, I'm trying... I have the worst memory when it comes to names of things. Um, oh gosh, there's there's one, actually it's very similar to uh, one of the blocks that's in uh, the quilt challenge. It's uh, up in one of the corner blocks uh, and it's gonna be coming out in week um, uh, five or six, um, I believe, five or six, yeah. I think so. I'm, anyway, um, it's one of the one of the blocks there, and it's a, a flying geese. It's a double flying geese, and it it just sort of rotates around the block itself. And uh, that one's a fun one to make. I like making that one. I love blocks that really show off the fabrics because I just love the beauty of fabrics. And you know, some of the medium sized prints that are real colorful or florals or uh, that sort of thing, or geometrics that are sort of oversized. And I love to show off fabric. So anything that has a, a big oversized patch, I love. Perfect. All right, Iris wants to know, how do I ensure that I get an accurate quarter inch seam allowance? Oh gosh, there's so many ways. Um, and that's a really good question. I covered it a, a couple of different places in the group. And I promised this week that I would go ahead and pin instructions to the top of the National Quilter Circle Quilt Block Challenge Facebook group. So if you do join, I'll, we'll have it pinned there within a couple of days. Um, but um, uh, a couple of different things you can do is um, uh, sew a series of strips together. Uh, let's say strips that are one and a half by three and a half inches. And uh, so when you sew those together, let's say one and a half by three inches, you're uh, sewing two of them together. When you sew those two together, you're then going to have a strip that's going to be two and a half wide by three and a half long. If it doesn't match that, um, and you really need to be accurate with your in using your um, rulers. If it doesn't quite make it or it's too big, then that's how you need to adjust your uh, sewing. Um, another way is to take a piece of tape, um, me measure from your needle um, along the um, foot of your uh, sewing bed, the sewing machine bed towards yourself. And um, you can use that as your guide for uh, quarter inch seams. Um, so in other words, you'll take a ruler and measure a quarter inch away from your uh, needle um, towards, uh, I guess it would be towards the right um, and uh, lay that piece of tape down and that can help you. That's sort of a quick, easy way to do it. Um, there are a couple of different ways though. So why don't I go ahead and put something together and I'll put it in the group. Perfect. So if you're, if you're just joining us and you don't know what she's talking about for the by the group, um, that we're talking about the National Culture Circle Quilt Block Challenge Facebook group. So if you are 
doing the challenge uh, and maybe just doing it through the website and haven't joined the Facebook page yet, I uh, definitely recommend doing that. It's NQC Quilt Block Challenge. Uh, also, if you haven't signed up for the challenge yet, you can also do that by either going to that Facebook page or there's a banner either above or below the video you're watching right now. And you can put your email into that and then you'll be signed up to receive the blocks. They'll come out every Thursday. This coming Thursday will be week five, but you can absolutely go back and make all the blocks. Like they don't disappear. They will be there like forever. <laughs> so you can go back. You can start this challenge whenever and, and catch up. So that's definitely something you can do. Cool. <laughs> All right. Along those same lines, uh, Cindy says, do you use a quarter inch foot? I don't. I don't. But um, <laughs> you look surprised. I do. I don't know. Because I, I am one of those people who I bought one of these like boxes of 35 or 40 like different specialty feet. And like anytime I can use one, I got to use it. I think I told you you earlier uh, in the audience early in an earlier video monthly video that I'm not a gadget girl. So you know I just kind of figure out things on my own, and um, I know this probably sounds so crazy, but when I sew on my sewing machine, there's like a certain spot that I've eyeballed that I know when I sew my my I line that fabric up along that one spot. I'm going to have perfect quarter inch seams and it works. I know it sounds ridiculous and and that's probably too broad of an answer for uh, some people, but I do know people who absolutely swear by the quarter inch feet. I've also heard where um, uh, some um, quarter inch feet people can have problems with that they're not always accurate. Um, it really, you really have to come to this um, uh, uh, point of really getting to know your own machine and getting to know the way you sew. And uh, my my first and foremost uh, recommendation for anyone who's starting out is take it slow um, and just be patient. Uh, and sometimes you have to go over it and over it a few times, but once you nail it, you're so going to enjoy the experience and. Uh, you know, then you don't have to worry about the quarter inch seam uh, problem again. Absolutely. And just because you mentioned tape, I'm pretty sure we have a video on the site. One of our instructors shows um, they actually use it's called moleskin. And so it's generally what you put like on your feet when you're hiking, but it has a uh, thickness to it. So rather than having to line up the edge by just looking at the tape, you can actually like butt it up against it and it just won't go past it. So um, I just thought of that when you said tape. So that's Another option too, just something that has that that little bit of thickness to it, so you're hitting it uh, instead. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. All right, we have another question here. Uh, what size do you cut your binding? Do you cut it at two and a quarter inches or two and a half inches? Oh, that's funny. Um, funny you should ask this because I think I'm going to go back to something that I was doing. Um, when I write a pattern, I always write it for two and a half inches. So if someone um, uses two and a quarter inch strips, um, they can do that. But I think I'm going to go back. I, I've been using two and a half inch strips uh, for probably a few years now. And I think I'm going to go back to the two and a quarter because I, I'm starting to sort of miss how nice and tight those bindings can be. And it seems to me that there's just a little bit too much space once you put the binding on, you know, because I... I end up sewing my binding exactly uh, to the quarter inch mark. Like when I go, let's say I'm I'm, sew, I'm hand sewing it onto the back after I've sewed it onto the front, I just barely cover um, my stitch line from the front. And um, so that whole extra space above, I guess it would be the quilt edge, um, it's just starting to bother me now that there's that extra little bit, yeah. <laughs> I love that something like that would bother you because I feel like that would bother me too. I have a thing where my binding has to match like the backing fabric. Like that's my little thing. So I'm glad you have a little thing too. I know we all, we all have our little quirks, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Marion wants to know, she says, I am loving your challenge. Any suggestions on what fabric to use on the back of the quilt if I have similar colors to what you use? Also, do you ever make an extra block and insert it into the back? 
Oh, yeah. Well, um, okay. Regarding the backing, um, I what I would do is um, either choose one of the fabrics from the top and bring that to the back um, or do something a little bit different, you know, just something that maybe even the style is a little bit different, um, but it's still, maybe the colors still blend with the, the top. I have one quilt that I did. Um, I used a combination of um, uh, reproduction fabrics and some like newer moda, but they still had kind of a, an old feel. It was sort of crossovers. And um, so it was, very it was a scrappy quilt but on the back i ended up putting this um, orange background darker orange dot on the back and it it really is cool it just turned out so cool so it is fun to sort of switch it up a little bit if you want um wait what the the second half of that was regarding blocks like extra blocks yeah i have actually i've i've added um extra blocks onto the back um even from other projects you can make a completely different looking on the back. Um, another thing I've done is I've taken scraps of my fabric um, uh, from the front and just sewed a, a bunch of different rectangles and squares together um, and just sort of filled it in maybe if I didn't have quite enough, filled it in with um, some, oh, maybe solids or um, something else. But you can have a lot of fun um, uh, creating a, a brand new backing. Yeah, and to go the entire opposite direction of what you just said, you could also do a plain color, light color background. And then when you have, when you do your quilting, or if you have someone else do your quilting, then you essentially have this reversible quilt where you have a light colored backing and you get to see all of the really fun, intricate designs of the quilting. So I've, I've seen people do that too, where they have this really intricate piece front with awesome quilting that kind of maybe blends in with the fabric. But then on the back, like the quilting just stands apart from everything because it's just on this solid color. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of like a whole cloth quilt. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. And actually the, the quilt that I made for, my, the sample quilt I made for the block challenge does have, um, actually it's a textured solid. Um, that's what Mo Moda gave me. Um, I would have loved to have had something different personally because I love prints, but they gave me a solid. So um, uh, yeah, you can definitely use solids and have that sort of reversible, cool, totally different look to it. Yeah. All right, this, this next question kind of goes along with something we talked about before, but Simone says, do you have an all-time favorite quilt pattern? Um, okay. Um, quilt, okay. So quilt pattern meaning, see, I take that as quilt pattern meaning a uh, pattern that you can get at the store or um, are you talking about all over like quilting? Um, I'm going to say like to me quilt, I'm thinking quilt pattern. Well, let's answer both. Just answer both. Okay. Your favorite quilt pattern like piecing okay. wise and. Yeah. So all time fa favorite quilt pattern. See, I am self-taught and um, I really, I've rarely made someone else's um, quilt design. I, I mean, quilt pattern uh, before. Um, and if I have, which uh, it's only been a couple of times, I usually switch it up anyway, because that my mind's always going and I'm always designing. And uh, so if I switch it up a little bit, then it feels brand new to me and it feels like I've made it my own. Um, so I, I would have to say that I don't really have a favorite out there. Um, uh, one quote that I've made though, that I really had a lot of fun doing and I've seen other ones out there, um, was, uh, a large, uh, Lone Star quilt that I did, um, for Free Spirit. And it's actually a free pattern on their website. And that was a lot of fun. And I've, I've seen something similar before. Um, so that would probably be my favorite. Oh, oh, we were also talking about, I, Ashley, I couldn't hear you just then. I know I accidentally muted my microphone. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, yeah, if you maybe go my, the other way. And um, yeah, so an all, so an all over uh, quilt pattern. Um, let's see. I, I know that I've had a couple of different times I've had like circles. I just love bubbles and I love dot prints for my quilts. So um, actually one of the quilts in my book um, is uh, a bunch of different circles. 
and I just love it. So yeah, I'm kind of a dot girl. <laughs> I, I love it when they do like teeny tiny little circles, almost like fill and they're all yeah. next to each other and they're all perfect. And somehow they can like trace and go back around a half circle and to get out to the next one. And it's still like nothing overlaps. I, it blows my mind. It looks awesome. You know, I, I, if it's the same thing, um, I think it's called pebbling. Yeah. And so it's like little pebbles. Oh, I love that too. I agree. <laughs> All right, next question here. Susan wants to know, can you give us any clues about the center block and what it will look like? Um, it will be 15 and a half by 15 and a half finished. Uh, is that a good enough clue? <laughs> is it, it, does it more closely resemble the first few blocks we've made or maybe does it look more like what the, the corner ghost blocks are gonna look like or? You know what, I, I'll tell you this. I, I chose it because I felt it, blended in nicely with the rest of the, the blocks that are, are going to be in the center. Um, and that's probably about the best clue I can give. <laughs> it's a mystery block I for a reason. Yeah, I want you guys to be surprised. <laughs> but okay. I, did, I did put thought into it when I, when I chose it. And um, today I was out in the group and some on the Facebook group is what I'm talking of. And um, someone had uh, sort of started a conversation regarding the center block. And um, what I can say is this, uh, that block may not appeal to everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some suggestions on places you can go online to find other um, blocks to put in that place if maybe you know it just doesn't appeal to you. Um, I felt that it should uh, appeal to a wide variety of people. And um, I mean, the design itself is simple enough that um, it blends in nicely. So then what would be the pros and cons of putting a pieced block there as opposed to leaving the uh, blank block or plain square fabric there? That's such a good question, Ashley. Um, actually, um, the, the purpose of me not putting a patch there in, in uh, the sample quote that I did was that I used such busy fabrics that I wanted to have a place for the eye to rest. And that's sort of a thing that um, artists do, like someone who paints a canvas or um, someone who creates something out of paper, you know, for paper crafting. Um, uh, with some designs, uh, if they're a little bit on the busy side, it's kind of nice to have a place for your eyes to rest. And you don't even, subconsciously, you, you don't even realize that but you kind of sort of uh, appreciate um, the entire design at that point. And when you think about it, when you look at the flat shot of that quilt, you have that um, sort of blank space in the center. And then if you're doing the um, bed size quilt on the very outside rim, um, essentially when you're looking far away, even though there are prints there, um, it, that's another place for the eye to rest because there, there's, um, uh, uh, cream or um, I guess it, it's a either a tan or a cream print fabric around the outside uh, so it just kind of is added interest um, and then regarding um, having the, uh, the 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 reason why we wanted to give an option is there's a space there and you can fill it um, the fabrics that I used uh, in the field of the quilt are it's just a very busy hexagon print. It's a gorgeous fabric. Um, but if you decide to put, say, a solid or a tone-on-tone -tone fabric or just something that's not as busy, um, then placing a, um, a block in that center uh, is going to make your quilt more interesting. Perfect. Uh, Beth wants to know, if I don't have quilt design software, how do I know if my fabrics will look good together? Well, one way to do it is to um, just sort of fold your fabrics into small pieces. So, you know, like when, uh, when you see a fat quarter folded all up, like around that size, that's a good size to sort of work with and sort of play around with. And then the bigger patches in your um, quilt blocks, if you just sort of expand those um, and lay those out as bigger pieces, that can kind of help guide you as well. I hope that helps. Yeah. So what if you're at the fabric store and, and they don't necessarily want you to cut little squares off of their <laughs> fabric before you buy it? How would you, would you just sort of buy maybe um, a wide variety 
and then take them home and kind of narrow it down? Or how do you, if you're just going to a store and going to pick fabric for a quilt, how do you decide what to buy? Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll sort of relate it to this project we've been doing, the, the quilt block challenge. Um, I gave a list of all of uh, a sheet of all of the fabric requirements and it shows the different scales of the fabrics. So one way to, to um, uh, sort of, I don't know, mimic, I guess you could say, um, good fabric placement is to take whatever quilt pattern you're working on and look at at the individual fabrics that the designer suggests. And if you're, for instance, working with like a smaller patch, um, or I'm sorry, with, a, why don't we just say fabric in general, with a, a smaller print and say it's a tone on tone, then find something if, if you do like, you know, and you are working with and want to work with prints, find something similar in your color palette. Um, that's what I would suggest. If you're going to, to the store and you're looking at a bunch of bolts, go ahead and spread those bolts out, whether it's at a Joann's and you know you want to spread them across your cart or um, you're at a fabric shop and maybe it's not busy and you can use your cutting table to sort of spread things out. Um, that's a good way to, to do it. But use the, um, you know, use the suggested fabrics um, in patterns and uh, just sort of mimic that and mimic also the color tonation. Uh, so if you have a deep red, well, and, and you like blues, well, try and find a deep blue to that's uh, sort of a similar fabric. Perfect, all right, we have time for about one more question here. Um, what happens or what do you do if you make a block and you absolutely hate it? <laughs> um, do you, would you tear it out and start over or would you, find a way to maybe add something to it to make it so you do like it or maybe just make a pillow out of it or what would you do with a block? You know what, I have I have them. Um, I do have, uh, you know, blocks that I thought, oh wow, these fabrics are gonna look so great together. And I've made them and I've just been like, you know, kind of like lukewarm about it. Those are the blocks that you can put on a backing. You know, you can add to it. And I've done that before. I've added uh, sort of, uh, blase uh, blocks to backs and you know what they it ends up you know you're not putting them in a in an entire quilt that's already been designed and they can kind of shine on their own in a backing um, or save them for a future project I don't you know for the most part I don't tear blocks up, back apart um, and redo them um, I, I just I, I don't know I See, my philosophy of quilting is this is something that we enjoy and comes from the heart. And, you know, if you're frustrated with something, just move on. Just put it to the side and move on. You can even throw it out. Maybe put it in, you know, if you're having a bonfire, throw it in the bonfire. I don't know. But I, I guess what my point is, is don't let it frustrate you. Because what we're doing is supposed to be enjoyable and fun. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to squeeze one more in here because Deborah says, I'm late to the party, but I've really enjoyed the discussion. Where do I go to find the beginning of the pattern for the challenge? Oh, okay. Um, go ahead and join our Facebook group. Uh, again, it's uh, National Quilter Circle Quilt Block Challenge. Is it NQC Quilt Block Challenge on Facebook? Okay. So NQC Quilt Block Challenge. Go ahead and search for that on Facebook. Uh, and go ahead and ask to join and uh, you'll be approved. And um, once you're there, um, go to the discussion tab, which is on the um, left hand side of your screen. Click on that. That will bring up the very, the most recent discussion and any pinned discussions. So the pinned discussions are put there by uh, the administrators of the group go to that pinned post and even if it's not the current block click on that and the page that comes up will have uh the very first block listed absolutely and just uh for any non-facebook users out there you can do all of that exact same thing by going to our website as well so you can either enter your email into the banner that's either above or below this video and that will sign you up for it or just go straight to nationalculturecircle.com and we have a search bar on that side as well and you can search for either Lexington Sampler, Quilt Block Challenge, any of those things will direct you to uh, the blog posts. So 
the blog posts are the same things that are getting posted each week with the instructions. So, so don't think that you have to be on Facebook to do this challenge. You don't have to be, but we do have a lot of fun on the Facebook page and you should definitely join it. If you have Facebook, uh, we'd love to see you on there. Um, but that is about all the time we have. Uh, I want to thank you, Susan, for being here to answer all of our questions and talk about the challenge. It's always fun to see you. Oh, this was really fun. I really enjoyed our session. And thanks so much for all the questions, everyone. And thanks for watching. We really enjoy when everybody's real active. And this was a really fun, active video. Perfect. Absolutely. We hope you all have a wonderful evening. Bye. Good night.